to at first um, reveal myself. You know, there's a saying, you get two Jews, three opinions. <laughs> I'm not necessarily a mainstream Jew, even though I've been teaching Jewish studies for 25 years. Um, my ideas would be more of the mystical um, side of Judaism, of which there are many Jews. And there are many, many different sects within the one religion. So I'm only going to give you mine. And in thinking about the purpose of life, I thought I would just use some examples of our common father, except for you, <laughs> Abraham. <laughs> um, because I think if we just look a little bit at some of the things of Abraham's life, it will reveal something about the Jewish sense of the purpose of life. So first of all, the first words that are said to Abraham in the Torah are lech lecha. Go forth is how it is usually uh, interpreted or translated. But what it really means, lech, go, lecha, to you. Go to yourself. Leave everything that you know, it says in the Torah to Abraham, and go to the place that I will show you. So first of all, we know by those words that we have to go forth to ourselves and find a unique relationship with God. In the um, very leading prayer, uh, the Amida in Hebrew, it says, Elohai Abraham, Elohai Yitzhak, Elohai Yaakov. In the name, in the God, uh, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. And the question is asked, why not say the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? It's because each one of them had a unique relationship and so we should also. Then the, the words go forth to the place that I will show you is some kind of um, embracing of uncertainty. That faith itself comes with doubt. And without doubt there is no faith and without faith there is no doubt. There is this kind of sense of um, a non-dualistic um, response to faith. Faith, doubt, they come together. Another thing about Abraham, oh, I was just going to tell you a little story, because I'm a professional storyteller, so I have to tell you a story. In terms of um, uncertainty, there's a little Jewish story about an old man who goes past the same guard every single day at the same time. And the guard says to the old man, old man, where are you going every day for years at the same time? Where are you headed? And the old man says, I don't know. The guard says, of course you know. You're passing here at the same time every single day. I'll ask you again, where are you going? The old man says, really, I don't know. The guard says, I'm going to ask you one more time, and if you don't answer me properly, I'm going to take you to jail. Where are you going? Really, I don't know. And the guard, in a fury, grabs the old man and throws him in jail. And as he's leaving, the old man says, you see, you never know. <laughs> There is something about that which is very Jewish. <laughs> you never really know. Um, there's another rather beautiful thing in Abraham's life that I'm very attracted to, which is, you probably know that Abraham circumcised himself at 99 in um, a, a, an exchange with God. God said, I will give you land and a great nation, and you circumcise yourself, which he did. He was 99 years old, and he was sitting at the opening of his tent, and three people approached. Like these people, right? Now. <laughs> and Abraham, it says in the Torah, ran up and immediately invited them in, gave them a beautiful meal, gave them water, and he, even though he must have been in pain, he washed their feet. So we learn from that that one of the purposes of life as a Jew is that we must be utterly hospitable to those who are in need. Um, there is a, just a very quick story about um, a man who passes a little girl every day on the corner on the way to work, barefooted, always ill, trying to sell something for a few cents, a few coins. And one day, one, one evening, on a cold winter's night, he comes back to his home after seeing that little girl again, and he's feeling really bad. And he gathers the family around the table, and he says, God, I feel terrible about that girl. You should do something about that girl. 
and the crockery and the cutlery began to shake, and a great booming voice from heaven said, I did. I created you. <laughs> <laughs> that is also a very important purpose in that for Jews. Um, ah, and then the thing that I like very much is that, that these three men who came that were treated so well were actually angels and had two messages for Abraham. One was that he and his wife were going to have a child, and the second was that the city of Sodom was going to be destroyed. And Abraham does something extraordinary, in my opinion. He goes out, and he has a very personal relationship with God, and he says, you're going to destroy an entire city? If I find 50 good men, will you save the city? God says, yes. Abraham says, 40. If I find 40, you're going to destroy it for 10 people? What about 40? Yeah. I'll save it. Then Abraham says, I'm like a fly, I'm so irritating, I'm buzzing around you, what about 30? <laughs> yes, the 30 will save the city. I'm, I'm dust, I'm nothing. 20? <laughs> 20. He got him down to 10, or he got God down to 10. But he wasn't able to save the city. Still the city was destroyed. 10 good people, I guess, weren't found. But it does say something about what we do in the face of injustice, even to the most high authority. That if we see there is injustice in the world, it is not necessarily God's will. It is something that we have to do to try and make it right. And even if we can't do it, we have to try. We have to be dissenters. We have to stand up and challenge the authority if we see it as unjust. I love it. I'm a dissenter myself. And I take that to mean something very important to me. That if we see the starving in Africa, it's, it may be God's will, but my role is to try and make something right. There's a beautiful Hasidic phrase which says, you don't have to complete the task, but neither are you free to desist from it. I think we've probably spoken long enough, actually. I could go on forever, but I'll leave it there. Thank you.